Thank you for joining us. Before we get started on today's episode, just a quick reminder to please smash the like button in the bottom right corner and subscribe to Locked On Senators so you can be the first to know when new content arrives. The best way to help us grow is to comment on the video as well. So let us know if this is a player you want the Sens to draft or you think they should stay away from and let us know why as well. This is one of 64 draft profiles that we're producing. So let's get into it. All right, Pillsy, back to the countdown we go. We are coming in at number 36 on our Locked On Senators draft ranking. Coming in with an average of 38.57. This kid is unbelievably offensive skill. Gleb Trikazov from the MHL over in Russia. Yeah, Gleb Trikazov is one of the most... uh... Dynamic. Divis- yeah, d- dynamic, but also divisive prospects that we're going to yes. talk about here. And let, let's start uh, with the stats. So like we mentioned, un- unlike a lot of uh, Russian prospects, he got a lot of time in the MHL. He had 35 games, 23 goals, 22 assists for 45 points. And then he did get a bit of time in the VHL, uh, 11 games, one goal, one assist, and no time in the KHL, whereas normally you kind of get... Uh, a, a, a sprinkle, yeah, a little taste of KHL action, but uh, not for Gleb Trikazov here. And the thing with uh, Trikazov, it's it's very obvious. Like any any scout, they all have the same positives about him. He excels in the transition game. And Will Scouch did a great video. Uh, you guys know I've mentioned him a couple times. He does a really great job uh, breaking down prospects and using analytics. He described how uh, Trikasov is one of the top guys in zone transitions that he has tracked all year and that he's a gifted puck carrier. And I feel like that just bland, that's so on brand for Russian hockey, right? Like we all know the the stories of like Russian players coming over and their coaches are like, dump it in. They're like, I, I would never, like I would literally never dump the puck in. Why? I have the puck on my stick why would I give it away? I'm going to skate with this until I die. And that's why Trikazov is so effective over there because that's probably, and I could be totally wrong, maybe times have changed, but that's what the Russian style coaches want them to do. And he's been able to figure out a way to do it at a high level. Yeah, hundred percent. And I mean, you mentioned the transition. What does he do at the end of those transitions? He rips pucks. He rips pucks. And we talk about the goal scoring prowess. And yeah, it's impressive. And all 23 goals in 35 games, 45 points, I should should add to that. But like, he is beating goalies from everywhere. It's a shame he didn't get time in the KHL. And even when he played in the VHL, which is the equivalent of the AHL, maybe a little bit watered down. But that to say, he's getting five, six minutes a night. I would have loved to have seen what he could do with that added uh, competition. But the thing with him is he's one of the youngest players in the draft. Late August birthday. So he's still 17 years old. Now, when we're looking at it from a Sens perspective, the last time they drafted a player out of Russia was 2005. Okay, like it's in all likelihood they will not be selecting this. And I'm also curious with everything going on in the political world, where are these Russians going to go in the draft? Like, will they fall further? Like we always have that Russian factor because they're all likely to stay in the KHL for a few extra years. Well, now like McDonald's left Russia, like, there's a big thing going on here that's above our situation here talking about sports on Lockdown Senators. But it does have an effect on what's going to happen. In the CHL, they banned Russians and Belarusians from the import draft. Yeah. So it's not like Trikazov can just be like, all right, I'm coming over playing the CHL. Maybe his, his agent can work some magic. I think he's represented by Dan Milstein, who has a lot of the Russian guys Probably. over in, in North America, including Artem Zub, Kucherov, Vasilevsky. Like, basically, if you're a Russian in the NHL, You've got Dan Milstein. So I'm sure he'll pull some strings, but Trikazov needs better competition to go up against. Because as you mentioned with his transition, like get him the puck and he's coming out of his own zone into the offensive zone. It shouldn't be that easy. It really shouldn't. He's over three points per 60 minutes. That is absolutely ridiculous this season for where he's playing. So I think it's, it's extremely crucial to see him in a bigger role in a harder situation. And just to show you like the... Here, you read off these rankings because, again, we're looking at a range here. With Odalius, it was wild. This, to me, is even more wild because our boy Tony Ferrari, who unfortunately he wanted to, just couldn't make time work to come on and defend his ranking of him. But he's got him at 12th. 12th on on his board. Yeah, that is intense. And Ross, is this the first player we've had where he's ranked 
by each and every um, uh, one of our entities. Now that I guess now that Corey Pronman has done his rankings, we have more complete. But so Craig Button has him at 33, Bob McKenzie 64, Wheeler 46, Pronman 51. So all those, uh, although there is some range, kind of the ex- same expectations. Then you got Tony at 12. He's very high on him. Peters back with everyone else at 46 and elite prospects at 18. So elite prospects and Tony Ferrari kind of in the same uh, mindset here for an average rank of 38.57. What do you think he needs to work on the most? There, there's quite a few things. And that's why it's so hard to judge him properly since he spent so much time in the MHL. That's like a watered down CHL, I think would be a, a decent comparison there. But he turns things up a notch when he has the puck, Ross, but isn't quite as involved defensively. Like I, I put in my notes, he's kind of like that kid uh, you play against growing up. That's just he's just hands down better than everyone through like novice and uh, Adam and and stuff like that. So he's completely disinterested when he doesn't have the puck. He's like, oh, I'll let those pigeons just like muck it up in the corner, and then when the loose puck comes, I'll go zero to hundred real quick, and he's just waiting for uh, uh turnover so that his team can have the puck and sometimes he just wants to be a hero out there and he'll get the puck behind his own net and all of his teammates are open everyone is ready for a breakout pass and he's like nah you know i'm just gonna force this and i'll carry the puck up ice and then all the other opponents are like okay hey, this guy is not passing for sure and they just swarm him and he turns the puck over and it's an odd man rush the other way and his teammates are just like cool thanks gleb <laughs> I want to let that one sit for just a second. Um, Corey Promen says that he can create offense for himself, obviously. Exactly. He's great That's vision and instincts. Yeah. But uh, then he says the skating's just okay, and his game in general can lack pace. Quote, I waver on his compete level. I've seen him take nights off and other games where he's engaged and works hard on both sides of the puck. Maybe that'll come with age. Again, he's an August 12, 2004 birthday uh, right shot, but like those most Russians, he plays the left wing, so he's open for his one timer, which is absolutely lethal. This guy can rip pucks and has for his whole life. Like I'll pull up here his uh, his elite prospects page as well because it is unreal, especially looking at him at uh, at the younger years, like eighteen goals in twenty one games, five goals in five games, twelve goals in nine games, and then I mean playing in the MHL, the same level he was at this year, but as a 16 year old for the entire season, 15 goals, 30 points in 49 games. So this year was his second year there. And look at the playoffs, yeah. dude. 13 games, 10 goals, 18 points. Like, yeah, the stats look great video game. Like, but like, let's, let's see it against the VHL competition. Let's, I mean, in a perfect world, let's see him come over to, to the AHL. Let, let's really put it to the test in, in a year or two, but no, in all seriousness, I think this guy, he's a project, but one with, ridiculous tools the tools that he has are elite which is why he's getting scouts excited especially ones that value guys who can work in transition super well play give and go get his teammates involved with great vision so there's a lot to like about him but for me he's a three-star guy like i'm somewhere in the middle of the the two extremes where it's like you know what if the sense took him at 39 cool that's a great range. I mean, Tony will be doing backflips. He might switch in his his uh, Red Wings jersey and throw get back on the sicko train. Who knows if they were able to take him there? But to me, he's a guy. Yeah, great tools. But I I'm of the mind that Sens need to draft like elite skaters this draft. Like I need skating to be the number one attribute of the players that the Sens take. And for me, Gleb, his elite, elite, elite skill is his shot. And uh, to me. I think a team will be extremely happy with him. And if you're listening to this right after your team selected him, congratulations. I'm sure he'll be a very good player. But for the Senators, again, very adverse to drafting Russians at the best of times. Igor Sokolov, the only Russian player they've drafted in, wait for it, the last 17 years. And that was out of the queue, not out of Russia. Yeah, I don't think it's very likely that he is an Ottawa Senator on July 7th. Yeah, Ross, I'm also down on uh, Gleb here because I... I will, again, I'll echo all his elite uh, offensive toolkit stats, but I'm really worried that this is a guy that's going to be stuck in his ways. And like you mentioned, who knows what's going to happen with Russian imports coming over. So he's going to be even more stuck in his ways, playing more time in Russia, more puck possession uh, type game. And 
like he just lacks pace defensively. Like Will Scout showed a clip Ross where he's literally, and I mean this literally, standing still in the defensive zone. I counted it four seconds. And that may not seem a lot to you, but think about watching a clip in hockey and going one, two, three, mm-hmm. four. And he hasn't like not even like not even like shuffled or anything. He's literally one stick, one hand on a stick, just sitting there, just watching. And yeah. You can't be doing that. That's not the way the Sens play hockey. And I'm just so worried that teams are going to just totally go crazy for his offensive toolkit, which is great. And he has that toolkit, but I don't think he's going to change and I don't think he's going to learn. So I have him at two and a half stars. I really, I, I, I wouldn't be that stoked if the Sens drafted him, honestly, just because I feel like he doesn't fit with what they're trying to do. And I think another team, like, I wouldn't be surprised, Ross, if we see the Carolina Hurricanes yes. jump all over this guy because... Wait, as, where's Wheeler have him ranked? Yeah, <laughs> good 46. Question. Okay. So, because his advanced stats are are great offensively. They're so great. Like, it, it, unbelievable almost. But they're believable because he doesn't give a damn about defense or any other stats. So that's why uh, I, I'm I'm lower. So two and a half stars for me. 